assalamu alaikum welcome to lecture 15 of AAA group and transnational audits group audits you must have not done in your double a this is something new in triple a okay so that's why we are going to pay more attention to group audits because in your exam you might get an individual company or a group company like parent or subsidiary or other divisions which you might have to audit so here we are going to focus on group audits specifically for group audits what are the considerations okay the consideration that has that applies to an individual audit almost all of them applies to group audit as well but in group audit there are some additional things that we are going to consider in this lecture acceptance how does a group auditor accepts what are the considerations how does they plan and perform the audit the risks for group audit and auditing the consolidated financial statement now completion and review reporting joint audit that is another term known as joint audit and transnational audits group audit joint audit transnational audit they are different terms okay so this is an overview of group audit okay what are the specific matters for group auditor group audit versus joint audit specific considerations you need a letter of support reliance on the work of others and modified auditors opinion now from the exams point of view okay group could appear in any question in the exam and it is relevant to all the stages of engagement it could come in the planning stage it could come in the performing or review stage you should always be prepared for group audit because there is a very high chance of group audits coming in your exam almost any settings i think have group audits okay now read the scenario to identify questions that relates to single or a group entity you have to see you know scenario whether it's a single entity or group entity remember if it's a single entity do not apply the rules of group audit there okay and take care to identify whether you are the auditor for the entire group like even the subsidiary um, along with the parent okay and reliance on the work of other auditors will only be relevant if you are not responsible for the audit of subsidiary then only you can take on other auditors now let's revise our consolidation consolidation you must have studied in your financial reporting and also in sbr okay so, but in triple a we are not going to perform a consolidated financial statements we are not supposed to prepare we are supposed to audit but for auditing also you have to know the rules of consolidation okay let's say parent has two subsidiary subsidiary one subsidiary two all of them has to go through this process what is it net asset fair value goodwill non controlling interest profit apportionment unrealized profit intercompany balance foreign currencies they have to deal with all these issues these are not there in individual why because in individual you do not consolidate okay and you make a single set of group financial statement earlier you must be having three separate financial statement parent has one subsidiary one has subsidiary two has another one three three becomes one okay in case you forgot the consolidation process and the steps you need to go you can go back to my sbr lecture it's there on my channel sbr playlist and go through ifrs 3 ifrs 10 they, they are consolidation questions you can go there and check now so specific considerations for group remember group financial statements are not like individual financial statements i mean it is but it is more complicated because there are adjustments consolidation adjustments that needs to be made okay and you have to rely to specific accounting standard there are some accounting standard you must have known from sbr which are specifically for group okay you have to comply with them then component of the group component of the group means subsidiaries subsidiaries are part of a group right yes so we say them component they may be audited by firms other than the group auditor it's possible that one auditor could audit the entire group subsidiary as well as parent or you might hire another auditor different auditors for each subsidiary 
okay it could work any anyway now organization and planning of a group are more complex than single company okay that's why for group audits we have a whole separate lecture only now auditor must determine whether it is appropriate to add as the audit of the group financial statements or not see group has is very complex complex means risk of material misstatement is very high so you have to decide whether you want to add as an auditor for a group financial statements or not second if acting as a group of sorry if acting as the auditor of the group financial statement these other things you have to clearly communicate with the component auditor component auditor means auditors for subsidiaries okay if you are planning to work as the group auditor you have to communicate this with the component auditor every subsidiary should know that you are the group auditor okay as well as what will be your scope and the timing of your work that is related to component and their findings okay second you have to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence regarding the financial statements of the component and the consolidation process so that you can express an opinion on the group now acceptance is the next stage accept us as a group auditor there are some conditions where you can accept some you should not accept let's go through those conditions number one whether sufficient appropriate evidence can reasonably be expected to be obtained if you can get the evidence easily relating to consolidation process and all you can accept as a group auditor okay you need information about consolidation process as well as pro the about the component of the group that means your subsidiaries you need their information as well next where component in auditors are involved engagement partner shall evaluate whether the group engagement will be able to be involved in the work of component auditor or not see as a group auditor okay you have to get involved in the work of your audit uh, sorry component auditor you cannot say component auditor are independent they will do their work and you will totally rely on them no you have to review their work you have to evaluate their work so you as a group auditor have more work one is the consolidation process adjustments will be on you and as well as component auditors work that is done by them now if engagement partner says okay that they are not it's not possible to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence why maybe group management might have posed impose some restrictions okay then disclaimer of opinion okay disclaimer of opinion you have to see in this condition you should not accept the engagement you should not become a group auditor okay and if you are in a continuing engagement that means you are not a new auditor you can withdraw okay now acceptance as a component auditor see rules for a group audit and component audit are different component auditor you have to see whether they are independent of the parent and the component companies you as a component auditor should be independent of the parent as well as the component companies that means the subsidiaries that you are going to audit okay you have to be ethical so you have to comply with the ethical requirements applying to the group audit next whether you have the special skills or not and whether you are competent to perform the work of the component or not third whether you have the understanding of the relevant auditing standard that is relevant to the group audit as a auditor whether you are a component auditor or group auditor even if you are a component auditor you should know the group standard uh, group accounting standard that applies for the group okay in some time we'll go through those standards that you need to learn you must have covered them in sbr okay you must be already a uh, pro in them now relevant financial reporting framework you have to have an understanding of it then whether they can comply with the group audit team instructions including deadline see your group audit team only will give you the instruction to all the competent auditor okay you have to see whether you can comply with the deadlines and whether they are willing to have the group auditor involved in their work you as a component auditor should give the permission you should be willing to accept the group auditor in getting involved in your work okay
now then comes planning and performing see planning and performing comes after you have accepted to be a group or a component auditor because if you do not accept only why do you plan right so overall audit strategy and plan obtain an understanding of you see it, this all these things were not there in the individual audit there you just understand the company you understand the rules the laws that's it here you have to understand the group as well as the component let's say there are five subsidiaries all the five subsidiaries you have to understand their environment it's, it's more tough you see because each one will have different uh, culture each one might be located in different location is it becomes more tougher okay and also the applicable financial reporting framework of the group and their system of internal control system of internal control for each component that means each subsidiary and the parent the component auditor you should have an understanding of the component auditor as well obtain an understanding of this is from the point of group auditor i'm talking about okay then the consolidation process you should have an understanding then you should you have to, once you obtain the understanding set materiality for the group including the components see in that group component is also there for the entire group parent plus subsidiary you are putting a materiality and you assess the risk. see these stages are same in individual also you first obtain an understanding you set materiality you respond to risk here also is the same but it's more risky and more additional things the task is more bigger because more component are involved here you see so you respond to assess risk and you see whether a component is significant or not see not all the component that means not all the subsidiary in the group are significant there are some component which are more significant than others you have to see them see to that then you review the last stage review the subsequent event in relation to the group okay now so we are going one by one all these four steps will explain in detail now starting with obtaining an understanding of the group here the group auditor how are they going to get the understanding the group auditor must enhance its understanding of the group its component and their environment like group wide control and obtain during the acceptance continuance stage see this understanding you must have got during when you are planning to accept or continue you must be in a position whether you should accept as a group auditor or not that time only you must have got obtained this information understanding of the group its component its environment next obtaining an understanding of the consolidation process okay you will see how the group management are issuing instructions to the components you can observe those then confirm or revise its initial identification of component that are likely to be significant okay and assess the risk of material misstatement this is why individual also is there individual audit also you have to assess the risk of material misstatement understanding the component auditor the second stage okay without consideration some considerations are there you just cannot rely on the work of other auditors okay the group auditors i'm talking about you, they also same way have to evaluate the work of others before relying on it my previous lecture talks about that only using the work of others right we went through experts internal audit service organization so before we relied on them we evaluated their work we showed whether they are objective whether they are competent or not here also is the same thing for group auditor so they should have an understanding of component auditor whether they comply with the code of ethics whether competent auditor is professional competent or not whether group auditor will be able to get involved in the work of component auditor or not whether component auditor operates in a regulatory environment that actively oversees auditors so if the component auditor operates in an environment where rules are not tight okay where their work is not overseen by someone else very likely fraud and error will likely to take place risk of material misstatement is going to be more there because sometimes component auditor might be see your subsidiary might be sometimes overseas okay So there the rules might be something else okay and then if the group auditor has serious concern about any of the issue okay then what needs to be done 
they should obtain evidence relating to the component's financial statements but without the using the work of component auditor you then cannot use the work of the component auditor you yourself only have to get evidence from somewhere else on the component's financial statement understanding the consolidation process the third step here see consolidation does not pass through usual transaction uh, processing system okay that's why they are not even subject to same internal control also because your internal control that is normally there will not be able to trace this consolidation process for that that you need more process okay so group auditor has to evaluate whether adjustments appropriately reflects the events on the transaction second determine whether these adjustments are correct okay correctly calculated processed and authorized determine whether adjustments are supported by sufficient appropriate documentation and any intra group balance intra group means transactions between two subsidiaries or parent or a subsidiary or subsidiary to parent are eliminated and they reconcile also for example asset in one subsidiary might be a liability in another subsidiary like that should reconcile if you are recording one transaction in one group one component it cannot be that in another component is not there it, they have to reconcile you have to check for that and eliminate that coming to the risk assessment okay to perform the risk assessment group auditor should have a understanding of wide range of matter especially that is very unique to the group and the component okay like instructions issued by group management to component okay this are the issue these are the issues accounting policies you have to see to that what are the accounting policies that is applied why because each component might have different accounting policies then risk becomes more okay then you have to see identification of reporting segment how the group managers are instruct issuing instructions on this area to component then related party trans relationship we went through related party relationship before right it says that by nature it's deemed to material then intra group transaction and balances reporting timetable now group wide controls these are the group wide control okay are you regularly meeting with the component and the is the component and the group auditor regularly meeting okay sorry the management then monitoring the process of the components operation and financial result groups management risk assessment process okay then monitoring controlling reconciling and elimination of intra group transaction common controls within an it system activities of internal audit because these are controls which applies for all the entire group consistency of policy across the group and group wide codes of conduct and fraud prevention now coming to consolidation process here the extent to which the component management understand the consolidation process very important for to have the tight internal control okay the component management should understand the consolidation process next they should identify and account for component the pro sorry process of identifying and accounting for component then process for identifying reportable segment process for identifying related party transactions how changes to accounting policies are managed procedures for dealing with differing year end it's possible your parent might have a different year end you as a subsidiary might have a different year end it becomes a problem you have to solve this issue procedure for dealing with different accounting policies two companies different accounting policies in the group then groups process for ensuring complete accurate and timely financial reporting the process for translating how the group translates foreign component you have to see all this how it is used in the consolidation procedures for reporting subsequent event all this are relating to consolidation only okay how consolidation adjustments are prepared and it is authorized is it authorized or not frequency nature and the size of transactions between component steps taken to arrive at fair values now we are moving on to materiality same how we have done for individual financial statements even for group we have materiality that needs to be set 
so here group auditor is responsible for establishing materiality and performance materiality for the group financial statement as a whole okay i'm sure okay i'm assuming you know what is performance materiality and i don't have to explain you again in case you forgot you have to go back to my previous lecture where i've talked about materiality there i've explained performance materiality also okay here materiality for component that materiality for component is also said by the group auditor only okay so materiality for component where they are to be audited by other auditors in order to reduce the risk of material misstatement in the group financial statements okay materiality for the component should be set at amount below the materiality for the group as a whole remember materiality for the group will be above the materiality for the component it will be low okay responding to assess risk the group audit team has to determine the type of work that has to be performed on the components financial information okay it does not matter who performs the audit of the component whether it is the component auditor whether it is some other auditor but you still have to determine the type of work as a group audit team next amount of work required will depend on whether a component is significant or not if the component is significant work will be more okay now what does a significant component means see a significant component is a component identified by the group that has this things either it is of individual significance to the group individually it is significant to the group or it it is likely to include significant risk of material misstatement to the group financial statement okay that means they have they are involved in some activity that are likely to include significant risk of material misstatement that is going to impact the group financial statement you see so we'll see both of this issue okay and basically a significant component we identify by using some benchmark that benchmark could be based on assets by profit on cash flow on liabilities or revenue okay remember the benchmark whatever benchmark an auditor is using is based on their own judgment whether they are going to go by the asset or the cash flow to decide whether a component is significant or not in your exam for the purpose of your triple a exam we use figure of 15% that means anything above 15% is taken as significant so 15% of profit or 15% of revenue or 15% of asset or 15% of cash flow anything 15% is significant this we use as a benchmark components which are individually significant will go through both of them first if it's individually significant you have to perform a full group audit sorry a full audit for a group okay full audit for a group means for all the component that are individually significant okay and if the audit of the significant component is to be performed by another auditor then group auditor should get involved in the components risk assessment this includes you have to discuss with the component auditor the vulnerability of the component to the material misstatement then you have to review the component auditor's documentation of identified risk of material misstatement because it's significant you as a group auditor have to do that work you have to review the component auditor risk of material misstatement okay you have to review the documents and you have to perform the risk assessment procedure okay so performing the risk assessment procedure themselves you have to do it and where components which includes significant risk of material misstatement first one was where component was individually significant here they include significant risk of material misstatement here this is what they have to do so here component is significant because there's a significant risk of material misstatement auditor can perform an audit of the components financial statement 
okay they can audit one or two account balances which are considered to be significant specified audit procedure relating to the specific significant risk only those areas which are likely to have significant risk you are going to perform specified audit procedure not for the entire thing components which are not significant what do you do you do analytical procedure you do not follow a full audit you just do analytical procedure for them okay analytical procedure on the component communication with the component auditor okay so as a group auditor you should communicate with the component auditor you are responsible for it in fact okay communication includes this thing what should be there in the communication the work that needs to be performed by the component next the form and the content of the communication made by the component to the group auditor a request that the component auditor cooperates with the group team the ethical requirements relevant to the group audit components materiality and the threshold for triviality that means not very significant identified significant risk of material misstatement to the group financial statement all these things has to be communicated with component auditor and a list of identified related parties now okay compliance with ethical standard you as a group auditor you have to request the component auditor that they comply with ethical standard that they comply with audit instructions that they identify financial information upon which the finance component auditors reporting insurance of sorry instances of non compliance with laws and regulation group audit sorry component auditor has to say all these things to the group auditor where they have not complied with laws then uncorrected misstatement okay indication of management bias significant deficiencies in internal control all these things needs to be communicated to the group auditor by the component auditor other significant matters communicated to those charged with governance any other matters relevant to the group audit and the overall conclusion of the component auditor group auditor needs to know all this from whom component auditor directly further communications okay this are matters relevant to the planning of component audit what timetable for completion how long will it take for component auditor to finish their work okay when are the group auditor going to visit the component auditor's uh, place list of all the key contacts of the component auditor i mean the component then work to be performed on intra group balances guidance on the statutory reporting responsibility of the component auditors instructions for the subsequent event revenue sorry review now this are matters relevant to the conduct of the component auditor's work okay the finding of the group auditor's test of controls on common system as a group auditor you have to test the control on all the common system then you have to find the internal audit whether it is relevant to the component or not okay then you have to request for a timely communication that of evidence that contradicts evidence used in the group risk assessment you have to request for evidence from component auditor and see with the evidence that you have collected and match if they are contradicting with each other then you have to do further audit procedure to get more evidences a request for written representation on the component management's compliance with applicable financial reporting framework who has to comply with the uh, financial reporting framework management management of the component that means subsidiary's management so you have to get a written representation from the subsidiary's management that means component component's management from time to time i use subsidiary for component so that i make sure that you are not confused with the word component it becomes easier when i say subsidiary matters to be documented by the component auditor okay now other information under other information this things could be there 
I will not tell you to memorize all this. It's not possible. You will not be humanly able to do it. But rather, after you see my lecture, understand with the understanding, do questions. Try to do questions on group audit. You learn by doing. You don't learn by reading. Because reading is a passive way of learning. You forget things. Once you read, once I move from slide to slide, this is a very long lecture. By the time I go to the last slide, you will forget what I've explained in the first. But once you start doing questions, you do one, you make mistakes somewhere. You do another question, you make another new mistake. You will learn all the types of mistakes that you have done. You will collect an experience. You will know where exactly which are the places you are making a mistake. This will help you to learn better. And you will never forget it, trust me. Because people never forget their own mistake. Okay. But if you read, you don't know which area you are making mistake or you are more prone to make mistakes and which area you are good at. So it's my advice that once you finish this lecture, start immediately picking group audits and start doing questions. You will get plenty of questions. Okay. Triple A is full of group audit only. Now, so this coming back to the topic, other information. In other information, all accounting estimate, all judgments that have been used. Okay. All significant accounting, financial or auditing matter. Because under other information, we only include significant only. Because we want to focus attention of the user. If it's not significant, we'll not include it in other information. Okay. Then matters relating to going concern issue of what going concern of the component. Matters relating to litigation, significant deficiencies in internal control because it's going to affect the group. Because if there are significant deficiencies in internal control, it's like an indication that fraud might be exist there. Okay. A request that the group auditor will be notified on any unusual event as early as possible. Why? Because if they are aware as early as possible they could do something some action could be taken now this other group standard i have been talking about i have explained all this in sbr in detail you go to my sbr lecture sbr playlist okay and check out all the standards okay go through today only in case you forgot and you want to refresh any of it you can go and in case if you remember all of them it's a very good thing so ifrs3 business combination ifrs 10 consolidated financial statements ifrs 11 joint arrangements is 27 separate financial statements and is 28 associates okay so if it's a subsidiary we have ifrs 10 okay if it's an associate is 28 joint venture is 28 joint uh, arrangement that means other than joint venture it's ifrs 11 So now, there's a risk that client does not comply with relevant accounting treatment. There could be a risk. So in this case, your financial statements could be materially misstated. Some examples would be on this area. So okay, see, this is specifically for group audit we are talking about, audit risk. Valuation of goodwill. Maybe in the valuation of goodwill, you're not complying with the standard. You must have understated or overstated it. Because you have to value goodwill whenever transaction takes place. Whenever you have acquired a subsidiary, you calculate a goodwill. So in that valuation of goodwill, it could you can make a mistake. Risk could be in this area. Next area is when you are translating foreign subsidiary. Because in the consolidation process, when you are having 5-6 sub foreign subsidiaries, you have to translate all of them into the uh, parents currency. Next, when you are having the year end which are not matching with yours. Group is having different year end to the component. Parent and the subsidiaries year end are not matching. Then audit risk is here. Next, inconsistent accounting policies. Subsidy is using another accounting policy. Another subsidy is using another accounting policy. You as a parent is using another accounting policy. Three different accounting policies. So it is inconsistent. So audit risk is likely to be there. Then, fair alley adjustment. Fair alley adjustment also, risk could be there. Calculation of non controlling interest. Yes. Elimination of intercompany balances and trading. See, when it's an individual financial statements, will not have NCI, will not have goodwill, will not have intercompany balances. All those things will not be there that time. Okay. So, elimination of intercompany balances. Profit apportionment. 
when there's an accusation or disposal during the year okay so in this area so this could be there and simple transposition or arithmetical error in the consolidation process it could happen right maybe your calculation is wrong or when you are transferring information from one place to another it could be wrong right for example 69 you are writing as 96 okay that is a transposition error now risk indicators for group audit these are the risk indicator it says risk could be there number one if your group has a complex structure risk is likely to be high there next frequent accusation and disposal and reorganization it's more risky then poor corporate governance system then there is no group wide control or the control that is there is ineffective okay component that are under foreign jurisdictions they are subject to some unusual government intervention high risk business activity and unusual related party transaction if these things are there so in your scenario you have to look for those things if these things are there they are risk indicator now we have some more Wait just a minute prior occurrences of intra-group balances that did not reconcile that means in the past you must have come across many a uh, situation where intergroup balances are not reconciled it shows that even in the future also it's likely to happen because pattern is always there is always a pattern when something is likely to take place in the past so many times it's very likely that even in the future pattern will repeat next complex transaction that are accounted for in more than one component accounting policies are different in in the component of this period then in the past there was some unauthorized or incomplete consolidation adjustment it's a risk tax planning is aggressive then auditors are being frequently changed so out of all this some risk we'll talk about okay when the year end is not the same how do you deal with it here's the solution ifrs 10 gives you the solution it says parent and the subsidiary should have the same year end but many a times there could be a difference if there's a difference that difference should not be more than three months for example a parent is having a year end in june subsidy is having a year end in december it's six months difference it should not be like that it should be three months or less than that okay because audit risk is likely to increase if the year end is different okay because sometimes what happens is the transaction might have taken place in that period when it was not audited so here group auditor has to plan to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence about transaction that are not subject to audit during that period now auditing the consolidated financial statement okay these are the procedures over the consolidation schedule you do all this number one you make sure the figures are accurate okay you check the figure from the component financial statements into the consolidation schedule then you recalculate the consolidation schedule to ensure accuracy then you recalculate the translation of foreign component to again make sure it's accurate you recalculate nci to make sure it's accurate then you agree to the date of acquisition or disposal and then you recalculate the time apportionment of this component in the consolidation then you see whether the classification of the component is correct or not for example did you correctly classified subsidiaries as subsidiary associate as associate and joint venture as a joint venture why different standard for each that's why and make sure that it is still appropriate even now for example when you bought something five years ago maybe that time it was a subsidiary is it still a subsidiary today you have to make sure of that or did it change from subsidiary to associate because of disposal or because of accusation you have to see all those things okay because if it's a subsidiary you consolidate if it's an associate you do not consolidate you only take the percentage of their profit 
Next, if it's an associate, make sure that you are using equity method, okay, according to IH28, and you do not consolidate. And for related party transactions, you review the financial statement disclosure. For the year end, okay, you have to review the policies and the year end applied by the component and it is consistent across the group. You have to ensure that. Intercompany balances reconcile in any minute in the group financial statements. When it's, the, when it's in the individual financial statements, you will see there's a balance. But when it comes to the group financial statement, there will be nothing about them because you will eliminate them. And when goodwill is calculated, see, uh, assess the reasonableness of the goodwill impairment of your client to make sure that goodwill is not overstated. Okay, because goodwill is an asset and most probably client might want to overstate goodwill. Now, when you're calculating goodwill on accusation, you calculate goodwill on accusation only. The time when you you have got control over the subsidiary. That means you are acquiring more than 50%. You have to calculate goodwill. You have to pay special attention to this first consideration that you have paid. See, you should know how goodwill is calculated. I am assuming you know the formula. In case you don't know the formula, let me tell you. It is consideration that you have paid to acquire the subsidiary plus your net NCI, fair value of NCI minus your fair value of net asset at the date of accusation. And if there's any impairment, it is deducted from the goodwill. So first is consideration paid. So to in order to make sure that you have paid the consideration on accusation, agreed with the bank statement. Next, for all the costs relating to accusation, make sure they are expensed and they are not capitalized. And contingent consideration. Sometimes you might not pay in cash. Sometimes it is dependent on some future condition. In this, that, that time, you have to make sure how the fair value is calculated. Okay. And, and that fair value should take into account the probability of payment and timing of the payment. Deferred consideration is another one. You have to discount it to present value because consideration is deferred. Okay. Review the work of the component auditor. We are coming to the completion and the review stage. At this stage, you review the work of the component auditor. Okay. So, as a group auditor, you can make an assessment whether you need to do any further work. Okay. After reviewing the work of the component auditor or not. If there are any significant matter that arises after reviewing, you have to discuss it with the component auditor or the group's management. Next, you, you have to review the component auditor's working paper. Okay? If you feel it's necessary. If the group audit is not satisfied with the component auditor's work, you have to do additional procedure. Okay? And if it is not feasible for the component auditor to perform this, then the group auditor must perform the procedure. When all the procedures has been com of the component has been completed, okay, what should group and, uh, and partner do? They should consider the aggregate effect of the uncorrected misstatement. That means each component might have some misstatement that is not corrected. So add them together and see what is the aggregate effect on the group financial statements, whether it is material or not. Other completion activity. These are other things. Okay. My next lecture will be on those areas only. Subsequent event you check, going concern you check, final analytical procedure you do. Okay. And all this are same for the group as well as the single entity. My next lecture in fact is going to be on this only, subsequent event and all. Letters of support. What is letters of support? If a subsidiary has a going concern issue, okay, in this case, because subsidiary is a part of a parent only, parent can give that support. They can offer financial support to the subsidiary. Okay, how? How? The director is going to give component auditor a letter of support by confirming 
that their intention is to support the subsidiary that means now they can continue with the support of the parent so it's like a parent is supporting their children financially same way here parent is supporting the subsidiary by issuing by giving a letter of support writing in the letter that they are supporting the subsidiary but still the component auditor should not take this at face value when this letter is given they should consider the position of the parent itself who is providing the support are they in that position to support or not do they have the resources okay before they accept the letter and say that uh, it's an evidence for going concern for the subsidiary you have to check all this so the group auditor must consider the impact of going concern issue for a group as a whole not only for the component but for the group as a whole you have to see the impact of going concern issue parent may disclose this guarantee of assistance in their financial statement that is in the parents financial statements i'm not talking about consolidated financial statement i'm talking about the parents separate financial statement there they have to disclose this that they are giving a guarantee to the subsidiary reporting after everything is done reporting is at the last stage so here it's about auditor's report audit opinion okay so where one or more of the subsidiaries has a modified audit opinion it does not matter who audited the subsidiary if the audit opinion in one or more subsidiaries are modified okay group audit have to see what is the impact of this modified audit opinion on the group okay now if the matter is it is based according to the group materiality level okay if the material matter is not material to the group ma uh, unmodified opinion will be issued simple but if the matter is material to the component as well as the group what happens what happens then don't just give an unmodified uh, opinion auditor should consider whether sorry auditor should consider whether the issue causing the modification can be resolved okay but the issue that is causing the modification can it be resolved as a consolidation adjustment can they resolve the matter with the client if the matter could be resolved with a client unmodified opinion but what if it cannot be resolved through consolidation process then matter is material cannot be resolved through consolidation process then it's a modified audit opinion okay where one or more of the subsidiaries as a modified audit opinion oh it's the same thing so note that a matter is which is pervasive to a component may be material but not pervasive to the group okay sometimes a matter might be pervasive to the component and it could be material also but not need not be that is pervasive to the group in this case okay for subsidiary there will be disclaimer of opinion or adverse opinion but for the group it's a qualified op opinion okay disclaimer of opinion or adverse opinion for subsidiary becomes a qualified opinion for group audit groups uh, report reporting to management and those charged with governance you have to report to the management at the end okay if there are any deficiencies in the control does not matter who identified it whether it's a group audit team or the component auditor it should be reported to the management of the group and any fraud or deficiencies in the group wide control again identified either by the group auditor or the component auditor needs to be reported to the management but this things needs to be reported to those charged with governance of the group that is this things overview of the work performed this you should not report to the management this you should report to the those charged with governance of the group for example overview of the work performed and the involvement in the component auditor's work 
areas of the concern over the quality of the component auditor's work. Difficulties obtaining evidence. Fraud identified or suspected. Now, from group audit, we are moving on to joint audit. So that's it for group audit. Joint audit means when two audit firms are appointed to give an opinion. That means they are working together. They are planning the audit together. They are gathering evidence. Both of them are doing. They are reviewing the work and providing opinion. Two people are providing. Two auditors are giving opinion rather than one. This is joint audit. Joint audit is different from group audit by the way. Okay. So before accepting the joint audit, still firm should consider the level of risk with this joint audit. There could be risk when you are giving an issue along with another firm. Okay. Here, auditor's report will be signed by both the firm and they are jointly responsible if things go wrong. In a way it's good, in a way it's bad. We'll see both the sides. Here, both the firms should consider their co firm's experience and quality and whether they are competent or not. Okay. So if accepted, engagement letter should be signed. Okay. And planning can commence which involves agreeing an acceptable and fair division of the workload. Both of them will take their division of work among themselves. Benefits of joint audit. You can retain the subsidiary auditor and their cumulative that they have gathered over the year will help you. Okay. Next. Having one pe two people is always better than one. We always say that, right? Two head is better than one head. Why? They will each have more experience. Their experiences might be complementary to each other. The resources will be more. Third, their strengths can play, right? And it can improve efficiency because each firm can play to their strength. They might have different strengths. Someone's weakness might become another person's strength. Then audit quality improves because of that. Because each firm will be reviewing the other auditor's work. So risk of misstatement going undetected reduces. Okay. And also in the position of uh, conflict, two firms is better because they can stand against the management rather than one firm. Especially on those areas where management biases could be there. For example, uh, those areas which requires judgmental areas. You can challenge the management. Two firms can challenge the management rather than one. And auditors independence increases. As the threat of intimidation and familiarity should be reduced. Because if one auditor becomes very familiar with your client or the client might have the power to intimidate, to pressurize the auditor, auditor independence suffers. But if two firms are there, it is not very likely that they will be intimidated or familiarity will be there. So auditor's independence improves. Drawbacks is first drawback. Cost of auditing increases. Why? They are doing duplicate work. They might be both planning, both collecting evidence. So work is done two times. Next. It is difficult to find an appropriate second firm. Sometimes it becomes difficult to find up to your level, to match with your level, with whom you can share your experience. Third, when you want to pursue your client that there's a benefit of joint audit, it becomes difficult. They might obviously for client is more expensive. They might not want to give auditors more fee. Then joint audit needs to be planned in advance. Okay, of existing audits coming up for tender. Two firms might have different culture, so it clashes when they try to work together. And there's a difficulty also in setting a joint approach because one firm might feel they are working too much. They are not, the work is not equally divided and things like that. Now, the last is transnational audit. This is way different from group and joint audit. Transnational means audit of financial statements which may be relied upon outside audited entities home jurisdiction someone who is outside that audited entities home jurisdiction also will rely on the financial statements here reliance on this audit 
could be for the purpose of lending significant lending maybe another country lending to another country so another person country might rely on that uh, financial statement auditor in that country because they have to decide whether they have to lend them or not offer significant investment in another country or regulatory decisions difference between normal and transnational audit is the boundary okay for normal audit there's a boundary that they should follow one set of legal requirement but for transnational they have to follow a wide set of legal requirements auditing standard is also there why this transnational audit could be because there are variations in auditing standard in two different countries there are variations in the regulation and oversight of auditors financial reporting standards are different and corporate governance requirement that's why so auditing standard okay despite the prevalence even though we say international standard on auditing international standard on auditing right it's international we say so every country must follow isa but still many countries use modified versions of their local standard okay so as a result what happens as a result what happens group audit that has a component from a wide range of geographical background that means subsidiaries might be from different different locations okay it is possible that the audit of the component will will be performed according to a different standard okay so if two audits are done in two different standard two component of the same group are done in two different standard it becomes more uh, at least to inconsistency and poor quality for the group audit as a whole and regulation and oversight of auditor as well as there are differing auditing standard the way it is regulated is also different the auditing profession okay some regulatory regimes are more strict than others so this means there could be penalties for not complying with the regulations in some cases it's more severe so if it's more severe they are going to perform up to more higher standard because they want to avoid such penalties whereas the area where regimes are not strict they don't have to pay such penalty they are not going to perform up to higher standard okay so this affects the quality of the audit of the component especially if the components are in two different regions a financial reporting standard see nowadays we know multinational groups right they work in different different countries they have their branches so when they are doing financial statement they are preparing they are preparing according to different standards in their country so there should so then inconsistency is there right they are not following the same financial reporting standard so you have to make an adjustments then adjustment has to be there so all the standards whatever the standards each country is following will be reflected in their component financial statements but when you are consolidating it will be adjusted to reflect the parents accounting policy so what happens it technically leads to more complex consolidation adjustments and it increases the risk of material misstatement also corporate governance requirement okay in many countries corporate governance is very strict okay it not only affects the director but but as well as the audit firm of the company okay so often the auditor are required to perform and report and whether they comply with corporate governance requirement or not okay in other countries corporate governance requirement like uh, internal control are more relaxed okay so if internal control is more relaxed it affects the audit why because internal control which is stronger okay there the audit of the component will be done at a more high level and it will be more effective also compared to where the internal control is relaxed weak in the component so here when auditing okay especially when you are auditing in different regimes auditors has to be very aware that they have to apply the audit of a transnational entity because they'll be bound by the varying laws and regulation in that condition when they have different regimes they are bound by various laws and regulation not just law in one country so 
to summarize group audit we started with specific matter for group auditors like complex financial statement adjustment group accounting standard like IFRS 3, IFRS 10, IS 28, then involvement of group auditor, component auditor, complex complexity organizing a group audit. Then we went through specific considerations like correct classification of investment, whether it's a associate, subsidiary, joint venture, differing accounting policies and framework, fair value, fair values on accusation, intangible, taxation, goodwill related profit share options subsequent event intra group balances and needs to be eliminated then we went through reliance on the component auditor they have to comply with ethics they have to be competent you as a group auditor should be involved in the work of the component auditor regulatory environment of the component auditor you have to assess the materiality for the component as well as the group and communicate with the component auditor so that's it now we'll be doing two questions on group audit before we conclude this lecture so and this question you have been given the financial information for a consolidated financial statement 2004 and 2005 as you can see revenue gross profit profit before tax then you have been given intangible assets goodwill rate marks property plan and equipment current assets and for liabilities we have trade payables and provision okay before that let us read little bit background of this company so you are the audit manager in ross and company and your audit client is more company who is into manufacture and retail sale of women's fashion and men's wear okay now more has purchased 100 percent of the shareholding in d rollo company d rollo also manufactures fashion accessories like jewelry scarves and bags in south america see here they are in the western europe okay for a company and all but the one which they have uh, purchased they are in the south america okay and they are sold throughout the world in south america that are sold throughout the world now Morris management is now planning that clothes manufacture will expand into south america so they are planning to expand their clothes manufacture to south america and sold it sold into re d rollers mail order market so now more is a member of ethical trade okay that means ethics this paragraph is more like on ethics okay ethical trade where they are aiming to improve the employment condition okay and what happened last week d rollo's chief executive was dismissed following allegations that went against their policy relating to what environmentally friendly disposal of waste products so they are acting unethical you see chief executive was there were allegations on chief executive acting unethically you see so the former executive chief executive is now you suing d roller for six months salary now we'll go about the fee so the fee should not exceed 120 percent okay So you have been recently being invited to accept nomination as auditor to d rollo also now fee should not exit 120 percent and you have been given carrying amount family adjustment all because this consolidation there will be some family adjustment okay you can always expect family adjustments in a consolidation question okay you can see their brand name plant and equipment current assets current liabilities okay so that's how you get net asset your current liabilities minus all assets is net asset and cash consideration minus this net asset will give you your goodwill so now you are required using information provide explain matters that has to be considered before accepting engagement very common question 
this is a very common question and you can always expect it you should know the matters before you accept the engagement for d rollo company for five marks so you can explain five matters because one matter for one mark 1.1 mark and b is for 10 marks explain about sorry explain what effect the accusation of d rollo will have on the planning of the audit of the consolidated financial statements or more so effect of the accusation if you acquire this, what will be the impact on the consolidated financial statements of Mori? This is easier. You, for this, you should know the adjustments of consolidated financial statements. Basically, this is according to your group financial statement. And we have covered this in SBR. If you have a very good understanding of SBR consolidation, this is going to help you in audit. But when you are answering this question, you have to think from the point of auditor, not accountant. Okay, 10 marks. So now, just previously we went through all the consideration that we need to go before you accept the engagement, right? Acceptance as a group auditor, acceptance as a component auditor. Those things you have to answer here, but you have to um, relate this to the case study that is given to you. That's it. Okay, so if you see the answer for A, isn't this we checked? We check the competence, we check the independence, we check whether they have the resources to carry out the audit or not. These are the acceptance matters. This matters. Then whether there is any limitation of scope or not, the P matters, right? And see, some of them, if you see profession clearance, fees, all these are even for individual also. Individual financial statements also. This acceptance consideration. When it's an acceptance consideration, you can include those things also. Need not be only for group. Okay. But you have to bring your answer and link this to the case study. That is a group company for group. Okay. But here we are talking about acceptance of Rose company. Okay. So profession clearance is one. And impact if it is declined. If the impact on the audit of Mori if the audit of this company is declined. You have to check that also that matters because if the impact is very negative then i mean if you declining to audit in d is going to bring a negative impact in terms of financial to mori you have to accept the offer it's it's wiser to accept the offer okay because you have to think from the point of a group now okay so now all this this is how you need to answer Whenever acceptance matters is there in subheadings like this, you have to write. Okay. To know the subheadings, to know what to write, this is where your knowledge helps you. That's why you have to go through my slides, my lecture. This is the only reason. Because many of you come to conclusion on your own that you don't need the textbook, you don't need understanding, you can just write uh, whatever you want, right? I mean, just read the answer and you try to memorize and then you try to produce those type of answers in your exam. It's not a wise decision. It's not a wise strategy to follow. You have to know. You have to know independence, competence, resources. These are the acceptance matters first. By either going through your textbook, if you are reading your textbook, if you don't want to go through that process, then my lectures are there. Right? You can look my slides. Because basically the same thing is explained but my one is enough video right to a video i'm explaining whereas in the textbook you have to you yourself have to read and understand and interpret okay so competence as we'll check whether they have the competence how are you going to explain competence you have to link this to the case study they are mentioning d rollo Bori company these things they have to link to the case study so here okay to audit rose and company you have to be sufficiently competent and you have to have an experience of undertaking audit Okay, that means you have to have a similar competence and experience in auditing. Okay. But remember, there is an issue here. See, because you have already audited Mori company. Okay. Okay. Or Mori company is the parent company. That's a much bigger, right? And they're in the similar industry, fashion industry, right? Both the D Rolo and Mori company. So it's very likely that you have a similar competence and experience because already you have audited the larger Mori company. 
so it is easier for you to audit rose uh, rose company rose and company because that's a subsidiary right that will be that will be smaller than more company which you are already auditing and also they are in the same industry fashion industry so in terms of competence and experience it will be similar there will be no issue for you but the issue comes as the market that they are operating you are in the western europe more is in the western europe but ross company up in the south america and you don't have knowledge of south america currently so you need knowledge of conducting business in south america including legal and tax regulation you need to know their tax you need to know their legal system see whenever you are giving uh, explaining something in acceptance matter try to explain both the side where you have your strength and where it's your weakness your strength is you have experience of competence and all those things are there but weaknesses is in south america you don't know okay this is how you are linking this to the case study you see in south america and all in your general answer they they will not say all this but because in the case study it is about a south america market you have to mention this in your answer exactly the same way copy paste replicate this style of writing in your other answers also now we are moving on to independence okay so for independence what can you write don't read answers and try to uh, memorize it will not work trust me 99.99% is a fair strategy you need to create your own answer but first you need to understand the concept when you are studying the lecture okay so independence you have to look for the factor that might impair independence of rose and company okay for example you can always give example it's always good thing good strategy to give examples so for example if rose company was involved in any due diligence review of dirolo okay then the same senior staff should not be assigned to the audit if a senior audit staff is already doing a due diligence review of dirolo that same person you cannot assign them for audit why it will impair independence independence will not be there so this is two issues are done right one is competence number two is independence three don't put numbers like this i'm putting numbers to show you because they told us for five marks okay resources okay resources could be in terms of money it could be in terms of staff it could be in terms of time okay any of this you can mention in your answer so here see you are in the western europe and they are in the south america so you have to make sure whether you have adequate of resources in south america like representative or associated office there if you have a associated office in south america it's easy for you so you have to check for that then regarding time whether you have sufficient time to do audit in the time frame okay next expected limitation of scope as an auditor you should not accept nomination if there is any limitation that is imposed by the management why because it is going to your quality of audit is going to suffer you will not be in a position to give an unmodified opinion okay because usually it leads to disclaimer of opinion if your scope is limited you will not be able to collect the evidence sufficient appropriate evidence that's why then proposed fee see they told fee should not be more than 120% usually is 100% so they have put another 20% increase right so you have to talk about that 20% increase in your answer wherever fee is reduced quality will compromise okay so you have to make sure that that fee that 20% increase in fee will be able to cover all the cost of dirolo okay and it should also take care of any annual price increase that means any inflation and all has to be factored into that 20% increase now they have given some more because some of you might 
write uh, the last points i mean all the possible answers possible solutions is given because take this answer as a learning opportunity they give you more and more points to learn but in your answer you need not give more than five points because it's for five marks but because this is for understanding purpose take this as an additional points or like how i explain you through lectures these are those points okay but we'll explain you those points as well in case some of you might want to know the explanation of it okay i'll come to the impact of declining the offer to audit in d rollo first i will explain you the professional clearance because that's easier okay so in this case more that is the parent should give the auditor written permission to communicate with the d rollo's current auditor you have to communicate with the current auditor and decide for yourself whether you can accept the assignment with them or not whether they are professionally cleared or not from any kind of claim or any kind of uh, allegation right mori may provide the auditor with additional fee earning that means other opportunities where they can earn additional fee like due diligence review tax consultancy if it continues to expand in future possible okay now so we'll come here impact whenever they talk about impact of declining or impact of accepting they are trying to tell in terms of finance what could be the impact see whenever one easy way to spot is when do i know what when to calculate ratios or when to use number is when you are given the numbers in your question you, here you have been given the financial statement you have to make some use of this financial statement it cannot be that you have given financial information and you are not making use of it in your answer it cannot be like that you should always make use of this even though examiner will directly not tell you the requirement does not tell you they only tell things to consider before accepting the offer looks like you don't need this financial statement but you need it make good use of okay so here you first need to understand to talk about impact always bring your answer in terms of materiality whether something is significant whether something is material or not because something is material it is going to have an impact if it's not material we don't worry about it you don't have to put it also in your answer if it was not material in this case is material we'll see how d rollo that means the subsidiary s is material to the more group how you have to calculate because when you acquired look at the fair value compared to the overall total value fair value over tangible non current asset current assets and current liabilities is 6.8 2.9 8% see here we are talking about the fair value okay in terms of tangible non current asset current assets and current liabilities if you see that they are significant how they got this we'll see see here fair value to the group okay they talk they they didn't take the brand value they only to uh, took the tangible non current asset that is 514 so this 514 okay 514000 they will take over total assets total non current assets it is this because this is the latest figure no this is 2005 this is the left side you have to take property plan and equipment so if you take like this it's 514 fair value of property plan and equipment and property plan and equipment from 2005 is this if you take it in terms of percentage it will be 7.7 6.78 that means 6.8% the next is about current asset current asset is 400 okay and here current asset is 13 this one 
so it is 13803 so it's 400 divided by 13 803 into 100 in terms of percentage it will be how much Two point eight percent, two point nine percent. You can take. And for current liability, six hundred and forty-eight over this eight zero ninety. 8% Okay, that's what we have got 6.8, 2.9 and 8% So they are material Okay And It's very usual that parent see it's very common why we did why did we talk about this Because it's very common parent will want to hire auditors to audit their subsidiaries only right Parent company usually wants to take their auditor and they want them to audit their subsidiaries as well. So in this case, if Ross company declines the nomination, Mura's management may seek an alternative auditor for the group. They can seek an alternative auditor. B. So now we are B. But write any five points, okay? I've explained you all the possible answer. Any five you have to write in your answer. Five is about the effect of accusation on consolidated financial statement. Here, you have to write as well as exp you make use of this financial statement. Okay? One impact is group structure. Very easy. Group structure will change. Okay? Because they are now, there will be one more subsidiary in that group structure. So you have to make sure that you identify all the entities in the consolidated financial statement. Next is materiality. Your materiality will change. Materiality assessment. Whenever we talked about materiality means, you have to make use of financial statement. Some numbers you have to calculate. Okay. Usually, compared to last year, this year, it will be higher. So preliminary materiality for the group will be much higher than in the prior year. Yes, obviously, if accusation takes place the same, material will be higher this year. For example, we'll see now, okay? Percentage of total asset is a detriment of the preliminary materiality. And this may be increased by 10%. How did we say 10%? Fair value of total asset acquired including goodwill. See, the total asset was 21,517. Go to the consolidated financial statement and see. See, total asset is this. This is what they have taken. But this year, when they took, okay, they have taken this. They have taken the non-current asset, this. They have taken all these three. And they have added goodwill, this one, 859. This, they have added here. So, it is, it is 2373. Okay. You see, 2373. So, if you take this as a percentage of the total asset from your consolidated financial statements is 10%, like more than 10%. Now, you have to reassess materiality for each subsidiary. Okay. Why? See, a subsidiary which might be material by end of 31st March 2004 might not be material to the group. Okay. Maybe subsidy was just material, but now it may no longer be material to the group. We'll see that. What are the assessment they have to do? This assessment will identify whether the full audit is required or not. If they are significant component, that means if the subsidy is significant, full audit. If it's not full, uh, if it's not significant, 
you can do analytical procedure that's what we have to see whether for this we have to do full audit or analytical procedure okay so in this case it is material okay they are assess a material to the group see when we are talking about assets you must be thinking why didn't we take 15% threshold because earlier in my slide I told about 50 see this 15% is to test significant component whether they are significant to the group or not but here we we only took their assets whether the asset is material to the group or not we didn't talk talked about the subsidiary so D dollars asset is material to the group for that materiality of the asset we have to take that threshold remember revenue has I think one to two percent then uh, asset then profit before tax that threshold we have to take it was explained in uh, before lecture I don't remember the lecture number but in my materiality lecture you will get there those threshold quantitative threshold that lecture you have to take that numbers you have to apply here okay so assets are material because assets are material now you have to do full audit that means you have to give them audit procedure that's what you have to do whether they have to review whether they have to observe whether they have to inquire those are the words you have to use in your answer now so here you can visit okay they should plan to visit the south american operation yes you as an auditor now have to visit their operation and you can even meet their previous auditor okay and you can uh, review their prior period uh, prior year audit working papers then d roller was acquired two months into the financial year therefore its post acquisition result should be expected to be material it is expected to be material to the consolidated statement of profit and loss see they were acquired just two months after this one if you see here year end is 31st march so 31st march 2004 and this accusation took place on may 2004 so april may after two months so it's just two months if the accusation was taken just one month uh, before the year end it makes sense that it might not be material but here at least 10 months they are there so it could be material then definitely with accusation comes goodwill okay you have to know according to your IFRS 3 how goodwill is calculated in your SPR the formula okay so for goodwill acquired it's a subsidiary so you have to talk about assets and liabilities you have to combine them or consolidate them on line by line basis okay then what else see when we talked about goodwill okay how did we came to this answer all these answers in different paragraphs you might be thinking right it looks like a little confusing i mean you might be thinking okay because the answer is in front we know that this is the answer but if it's not there how do we know what to answer how do we know what to start it's very simple break down it into chunks of information for example We are talking about goodwill decide under goodwill what are the things you are going to talk about goodwill so goodwill has net asset right goodwill has net asset goodwill has nci goodwill will have consideration so you can talk about them in different different paragraphs we'll start with net asset so net asset has two things one is tangible asset ta one is intangible asset ia okay and obviously consideration and all those things NCI will not be here because you have a quite hundred percent so zero percent NCI so that is left out only consideration and net assets so the net asset two types of assets intangible assets tangible assets so we'll talk about intangible first the brand name okay so we'll start by that one by one we'll see okay so now we have to check the fair value we have to do audit work to check the fair value we have to review the fair value of the brand name how 
we have to review a uh, review of a brand valuation by specialist because obviously some specialist only is going to put some valuation on the brand right so we have to review that we have to review the specialist working papers and make assumption i mean i mean make an assessment whether assumptions are reasonable or not because obviously to put valuation on anything requires some assumption you have to see whether those assumptions are reasonable or not one thing is gone now you know one paragraph is gone brand name next about plant this is about tangible asset this is about intangible asset you see once you know this format is very easy to write any answer in fact you only have to know how to break down so tangible asset if you see you have to see whether this is material or not okay if you see plant also same thing they must have been valued by someone else independently before the accusation okay so that's why it's more likely that you might need the work of some expert you might have to rely on some expert values okay now we'll see what is the fair value adjustment okay the fair value adjustment on planted equipment is very high what is the percentage 441 percent we'll see how it is done okay that is the carrying amount at the date of the accusation okay so if you go by this that means even depreciation is going to be over prudent because i told you with when you talk about asset non-current asset talk about depreciation and when is intangible asset we talk about amortization but here we didn't talk about amortization but it's okay but so now we'll see how 441 percent we got okay see here here okay fair value adjustment is this and carrying amount is this so fair value adjustment is more than the carrying amount it makes sense it will be more than 100 percent so 419 over 95 how much Four hundred and forty-one. It's four point four one multiplied by hundred, so four hundred and forty-one percent. It is not the other way around. It's not ninety-five over four hundred nineteen. We want to know out of the carrying amount how much is the fair adjustment. Fair adjustment is much higher. It's four times higher, right? So, and the next one is what? This paragraph. We are talking about goodwill, and whether it will be impaired or not so if you see goodwill see goodwill is 859 cash consideration is this if you take in terms of percentage 859 over 1725 more than 50 percent out of that cash consideration more than 50 percent is what goodwill only just take half of cash consideration more than that good it's goodwill only okay so here Mm, approximately 50% of cash consideration is what goodwill that means is material goodwill is material the so, and goodwill is an asset so it's most likely that you are going to overstate okay so it may be overstated if more had failed to recognize any assets that they have acquired okay for example they may have acquired intangible asset like customer list of franchise see these things were not there in the case study how did they came to this it's very easy if you have a very uh, see in what industry are they they're in the clothing industry okay and it's very likely that this type of industries franchises could be there there could be customer list also right intangible asset for this industries will be like that only customer list franchise most of the industries has this customer list franchise it's just your general understanding okay or in other words professional skill wise your commercial argument if professional skill marks is given for this question you will get marks for this commercial argument and all okay so if they have acquired intangible assets like this remember this should be separately recognized from goodwill goodwill and other intangible assets are separate even though goodwill is part of intangible asset they are not together you have to show them separately and amortized amortize what this you have to amortize goodwill and other intangible asset differences 
goodwill will test for impairment other intangible assets we amortize that's the difference okay subsequent impairment after goodwill it comes subsequent impairment very common okay so see here how you are linking remember we got a uh, there was some allegation against the D rollers former chief executive that they are unethical and all that they are suing D roller for not paying six months of salary exactly so these are indicators of impairment of what their brand name they have a brand name so all this is going to take a toll over their brand name their reputation that's why auditor should draw attention to this whether their brand name and goodwill is going to suffer impairment or not because of the allegations Then we are moving on to liabilities. So we have talked about all the assets I feel. Impairment also we talked about, goodwill acquired, non-current, current, everything we have included almost. But liabilities is there, right? Basically all the elements of the financial statements we are explaining. So in the liability, uh, okay proceedings in the legal claim made by the the former chief executive they have made some they have made a legal claim against d roller so we have to review that what is the proceedings what are the possibilities of you winning or losing that liability that legal claim okay because if this is not resolved what happens you have to disclose a contingent liability okay in the consolidated financial statement depending on the materiality of the amount so legal opinion you might need a legal opinion on the likelihood of successfully defending the claim provision should be made for any actual liabilities like legal fees if there are legal fees you have to make a provision for it okay i is 37 uh, rules if you know will help you here then we are coming to related party transactions and balances the group just wait a minute that's quite okay so if you see related party okay there could be associate also in that group okay so a list of all the companies in the group including any associates should be included in the group audit instructions why to ensure that any intra group balances and all are eliminated on consolidation even unrealized profit okay and regarding any transfer pricing you can talk about transfer pricing also for clothes Manufactured by D-Roller for More and sales of D-Roller accessories to More's retail, retail store. This is a transfer pricing because parent is selling to subsidy or subsidy is selling to parent, whatever. That's why we're talking about transfer pricing policy. When there's a transaction between the two related party. Okay. So any transfer pricing policies must be ascertained and any provision for unrealized profit eliminated. Even if there's a profit between them, it should be eliminated because there's intergroup profit. Then, it should be confirmed at the planning stage that any intercompany transactions are identified in the accounting system itself. Okay, and they are reconciled regularly, intercompany balances. Then, other auditors. It's possible that Rose Company might plan to use the work of other auditors in South America. They might need the help of other auditors in South America, right? Rather than they sending their own stuff to there. So here, group instructions will need to be sent containing all those things will be there if they are using other auditors. They might request whether they are independent or not. The pro forma statement. A list of group and their associated companies, list of related parties, statement of group accounting policies, timetable for their preparation of financial statement, group financial statement, 
copies of written representation from management audit work summary questionnaire or checklist and contact detail of the senior members of the roles and companies audit team all those things will be sent now accounting policy see they may have a material accounting policies okay d rolo and it might not comply with the rest of the group so as auditor to d rolo ross company should recalculate the effect of any non compliance with a group accounting policy okay you have to make sure that you recalculate any accounting policy okay if they are not effect if they are not complying with the group accounting policy you need to see what is the effect by recalculating time table okay so the time table for preparation should be agreed with the management and these are the key dates you have to uh, make an agreement for intercompany balances you have to submit the pro forma statement you have to complete the consolidation tax review has to be done audit field work by other auditors has to be completed subsequent event review okay you have to do a final clearance of the financial statements of the subsidiaries and final clearance of the consolidated financial statements this is like that final stage after auditing the consolidated financial statement now we'll be moving on to another question test your understanding too so the second question is also very much like the first question with some differences here you have an extract from the auditor's report of the opinion as you can see this is a qualified opinion and this is a basis for that qualified opinion extract okay and here also here you are not given the full financial statement but you are given some notes to it you have been given the profit before tax and total asset for the subsidiary and for the group and you are required 10 marks to identify and explain remember identification is one mark explanation is another mark okay so you identify and explain the matter that should be considered and actions for and action means it's another requirement so there are two requirements in one to identify and you explain and then you write the actions that should be taken by the group audit engagement team in forming an opinion on the consolidated financial statements so one is matters that should be considered on forming opinion the other one is actions okay part a part b is based on this okay b is you have to respond to this trainee accountant's question what is that question so there is a trainee accountant who is assigned to the audit team okay and it is his first group audit so now they have made a comment i understand that group audit engagement one of the requirement is to design and perform audit procedures on the consolidation process so you have to explain them the audit procedures on the consolidation process this is an easy one for five points so any five audit procedures on consolidation you can give and it is not dependent on your a okay they are there are two separate questions so for a will he need to read a little bit of the case study okay here you are supposed to do an audit for a group okay and this group has a parent company and six subsidiaries okay and out of the six subsidiaries you have almost completed okay so, so the audit of individual company financial statements is almost complete and now you are auditing the consolidated financial statement and one of the subsidiary excuma is audited by another firm okay it is not audited by you another firm out of the six and you are satisfied that competence they are independent as well as competent is there so when you are writing under consideration do not write these two points again because already you, that test is satisfied 
okay now they have received some extract so we'll read the extract okay qualified opinion now we'll see why audit is uh, opinion is qualified it is because of the 2 million that is related to court case okay financial damage of 2 million relating to court case and it is explained in note 12 okay currently management did not recognize a provision for that they disclosed it as a contingent liability but according to IFRS that means IFRS they say a provision should be made so they have given all the definition and it says that it meets the criteria according to IS 37 IS 37 is the standard for provision right so it means the rule of definition of provision and say they say provision should be recognized okay so they say in our opinion provision of this one should be recognized now if this 2 million provision will be recognized what happens is net profit and the equity will reduce by 2 million okay note is given so this is the note according to note okay there's a 20% chance of successful claim being made against the company. Okay. And you have been given the profit before tax and total asset. Now tell me, based on your experience, why did they give you this profit before tax and total asset for the subsidiary and the group? In order to find whether this group, this component, it's material or not, just to test materiality. That's what's given. The job of this is to test materiality, how material it is, based on profit before tax and total asset. Okay, so we'll identify the matter and actions. Now, first important thing you will take in consolidated is whether component is significant or not. Then accounting issue, what is the materiality of the accounting issue? Number two. Number three. Okay. We'll talk about the qualified opinion. Then regarding review and discussion of the audit work relating to court case. Further audit procedure. Then you have to discuss with the management. Discussion with the management. Then adjustment to the financial statement. Then adjustment on consolidation. Okay, and if no adjustment is made, the impact okay so b is just the procedure you see so b we can go through later first we'll finish with a okay whether it is significant or not since the two things is given is very easy and conclusion is yes it's significant why just take profit before tax four out of twenty is 20 percent and if you take 20 over 85 in terms of total asset also it is some 23.5 percent again it's material because both are more than 15 percent okay so it is a significant component 20 percent and 23.5 percent okay so individually they are significant okay so therefore it is material to the group Next, materiality of the accounting issue. What is it? Accounting issue is a 2 million case. Is it material or not? If you take this 2 material out of the profit before tax for ex, uh, for Excuma, Excuma's profit before tax is 4 million. Don't take the group. Take only for the Excuma. It is 4. 2 divided by 4. 50%. So it's very material. You see, 50% of the profit before tax is just uh, the claim that is 2 million. Out of 4 million, 2 million is the claim. That is 50%. And if you take it in terms of total asset, total asset is how much? It is 20 for Excuma. So if we take 2 over 20, it is 10% material. So here also is 10% of total asset. So it's again material. This legal case is material. So this is material to the group representing if you take in terms of group it is 10 percent and 2.4 percent if you take in terms of assets how see if you take 2 over 20 10 percent and if you take 2 over 85 
you will get the percentage even in terms of group it is material and individual also is material it is 2.4 percent you have should always check individually whether something is material or not first if it's material then check for the group also that's how it goes okay now we are coming to the qualified opinion okay that means we have to talk about i37 only basically so here they have expressed a qualified opinion because of material misstatement regarding the court case okay and currently management has given it as a contingent liability and auditors believe it should go according to is 37 that means provision should be recognized rather than con disclosing contingent liability so if you see in terms of material see now there's a confusion contingent liability or provision contingent liability or provision because management says contingent liability auditors feel provision how are we going to decide this based on materiality so if you see the materiality given the materiality of the matter to the individual financial statement this opinion seems appropriate that means it is appropriate to say it's qualified only it stays qualified only okay rather than adverse as long as the audit evidence concludes that provision is necessary because it's material that's why earlier they have given a qualified opinion even now it's material we have just tested the fit okay so it is okay to say yes qualified opinion is correct now we'll review this work because you have to give action also remember they told action so here you have to do work that is audit action means what audit procedure only okay so you have to audit work should be performed by the other auditor because another auditor is reviewing this subsidiary so they have to do the audit work and you have to review them okay it has to be subject to review by the group audit engagement team even if the audit work will be done by another auditor you have to review that work still as a group auditor okay then you have to collect evidence which says that probability of outflow of cash you have to review that what is the probability of outflow of cash for the court case okay now evidence should include copies of c you have to talk about evidence from the point of evidence whenever you give action from where are you collecting evidence i told you audit procedure includes three things okay your evidence source of evidence what are you telling on what you are testing assertions so evidence should be copies of legal correspondence you should have a very good understanding of evidence by the way court case where could be the evidence from copies of legal correspondence every court case has some legal correspondence so get the copy of it get the copy of the actual claim which says uh, to and written representation from management detailing management reasons for believing that there's no probable cash outflow you see management says it should be contingent liability because probability of cash flow outflow is not very uh, it's not much so you have to ask the management you have to get a rep written representation from the management saying what reasons do they have to prove why they feel so now further audit procedure okay so if you see the group engagement partner okay they have to consider engaging an external expert for the court case that means what is the probability of the court case going against the company you need an external advice now discussing with the management okay so all the matter relating to provision should be discussed with the management group engage management team okay and the view that they give should be documented as a written representation you have to communicate with management those start with governance okay and this impact depends on whether the adjustment is made in the individual accounts of the company or not or and also on consolidation then we are moving on to adjustments to individual financial statement that is the subsidiary's financial statement only first okay 
So if you see, by definition, Xcuma is a subsidiary. Okay. So that's why management of the Xcuma, they can be asked to adjust the financial statement to recognize the provision. And if this happens, if this happens, see some another another auditor was auditing them, right? Then that auditor's report have to be redrafted now with an unmodified opinion. Because if financial adjustments are adjusted, why will you give qualified opinion? Then you have to change from qualified to unmodified opinion, right? And also the group mod audit mod uh, sorry, group audit opinion will also be unmodified. If adjustments are done, if adjustments are not done, that's another issue. Now adjustments on consolidation, okay? If they are not amended, if financial statements are not amended of the subsidiary, what happens? And adjustments should be made on consolidation. Even if individually financial statements are not amended, at least when you're consolidating adjustment has to be made in the group financial statement to include that provision. Okay, what happens if you do that? In this case, opinion on Xcuma will remain qualified only. Why? Because there you are not doing the adjustment. But in the group, group audit opinion will be, okay, they will not be qualified. You don't have to qualify them because you have made the adjustment. Okay. Because whatever the matter that was causing material misstatement has been rectified. So you do not qualify them. That remains unmodified. You understanding? If no adjustment is made, what happens to the opinion? If no adjustment is made, neither in the individual nor in the group, what happens to both the financial, uh, to both the group audit opinion? Then group audit opinion will be qualified because there is a material misstatement. And in this case, a paragraph that means basis for qualified opinion should explain the reason. What would be the reason? Reason will be non-compliance with IS 37. That means they should have recognized provision. They didn't recognize provision. Individually, qualified remains qualified, but group becomes qualified then. Group also becomes qualified. And also financial effect of this should be explained. Okay, on the consolidated financial statement. And if you have used the work performed by component auditor, that's what you have done, right? Xcuma company have a separate auditor and you have relied on their work. If you have relied on them, you should still not make any reference to their work. Okay, reference to the work of the component auditor should not be made in the report. Now we are moving on to part B, procedure on consolidation. Directly, this is copy pasted from the my slides only that I went through. When on consolidation, what are the audit procedure? Exactly the same thing here they have mentioned. Okay, that means agreeing the component financial statements with the consolidation schedule to check accuracy. I told you audit procedures will have uh, this thing, a verb, okay, then to which, what is the assertion that you're testing and the evidence, source of evidence, consolidation schedule. So you recalculate that to check arithmetical accuracy. And if there is a foreign component, you recalculate the translation to check accuracy. Then if there is non-controlling interest, you recalculate to check the accuracy. Okay. Then regarding date of accusation and disposal, you agree it to the time apportionment of the result. Then see whether the classification of the component is correct. Cor correctly, subsidiary associate joint venture has been classified and it is still appropriate or not. If there are any related party transaction, check for the disclosure. Review the financial statement disclosure. Review the policies and the year end because year end might be different from subsidiary and the other group. They should be consistent. Intercompany balances, reconcile and cancel them. Check the reasonableness of the goodwill impairment for the client because goodwill should not be overstated. And finally, for farewell adjustments, you have to review and recalculate. Okay. Thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next lecture.
with this lecture i have finished my section d that is audit of financial information section d of your triple a syllabus next section will be focusing on the completion part review completion and reporting audit audit is report subsequent event going concern section e of the syllabus and even section e from that area also one question will be tested so now my job is over it's your job to finish all the questions from your revision kit up to section d that means your evidence your materiality your uh, what do i say group audit okay then join audit if there is any transnational audit then quality control planning so planning part and all is done okay now we are on the last part it was the latest stage of audit that is reviewing reporting and all those things and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get the notification of all my latest video update and see you in the next lecture